So the ear is going to be narrower on the bottom, wider on the top. So I like to have to take the material off the back of the ear and have it straight up and down on the front. But it can go either way. The other thing that I should point out is that as it comes down it tapers in. Uh, unless you've got a real cauliflower ear where the, the bottom of the ear jets out. Again, it's all personal design. So I'll show you how I set up my ear. Halfway across the bottom I put a mark. Halfway across the back I put a mark. And then I join that together. Like that. And I'm going to knock off each corner. Of course it's important that you start off with this block the same size as that block or relatively close. Remember that you can only see one ear at a time so it's not as critical. So then it's just a question then of you know what uh, how much material you're going to take off. So I'll just start and uh, knock off the corners the way I've got it marked there. I use a knife. I'll try and do this on camera so that pencil mark so it's a bit more obvious. So there's my ear. So you can see it's just flat edges all the way around the outside but it gives you the illusion that it is a, an ear. The size does matter, it's whatever size you want to make it. So the next operation I'm going to do is I'm going to remove a bit of material on the inside so that I can create that lobe so that can you see it it's coming it starts to come in and then my next operation is I'm going to start to remove a little bit of material where that flap fits in and uh, I take off a bit of material with a a knife and then I use my ear gouge. This is about a number oh, seven I guess and it's uh, five millimeters. So I'm going to come in and start to remove and you can use a high sided gouge in there works good too. I want to get a kind of a flat spot Get a flat spot right in that area there. Can you see that? So I've hollowed that all out and I've noticed that I'm not touching the globe or the lobe at all. And that's got to stay. Got to leave that there. And now I'm going to do one more operation then I'll pass it around. And I'm using the same gouge I'm going to take and I'm going to jab it in. That creates that flap in the air. <clears throat> okay, so now that's it set. So now I got to get uh, this shape coming down, just a curve down into the the lo lobe. So I'm going to or into the uh, the flap in the center here. So I want to get that down pretty low, so that I just create a 
a slope coming down here. So from the top down, just give it a nice shape coming down. Then after that, you're going to get a, a uh, high sided gouge. This is a number 11, uh, number 11, 3 millimeter. Uh, there. Now I'm going to work at this upside down. So now I want to be able to create a, uh, where are we? Create a ridge on the outside so I've got a when I go to remove this wood I'm moving inside quite a bit so that I create the edge outside. So just gradually create a shape and we're going to come into where that stop cut is where the flap is and I do the one on the bottom. Remember I got to leave the lobe sitting there. work my way around the outside and one more cut in there so just using the gouge to create a shape notice that I'm inside so I create this nice ridge all the way around the outside and it leaves a, that nice shape in the middle and you can generate whatever shape you want in there just by how you remove the wood but that gives you a pretty good ear just as an inside shape just the way it sits there now I'll, I'll pass this one around okay so something I should have mentioned uh, earlier is that uh, make sure that your the block that you got is the size of the ear that you really want. Okay? Um, whether the bottom is in the right spot or the top, whether the width the, the width is the right width, um, I just went ahead and I'd already had that set up and formulated in my mind. So now you got to decide on uh, what kind of additional shape. Now, if you're not happy with the the lobe being as big as that, uh, you could par it down and reshape it. Remember the grain is up and down so that now when I go to round these things off I'm going to take off all the sharp edges for starters and then I can't come up to remove the wood down the side here I have to come down on the on that in order to follow what the grain is going to allow remove it up the other way at the top And basically all you're doing is rounding over the edges and you can see how that pretty well instantly gives you that shape. There's a sharp edge there. So there it is, rounded. Now the Now the other feature of an ear is that it hangs kind of away from, from the side of the face. But we're not going to undercut it uh, because we haven't established the side of the face yet. Okay, because you've got a, a pair of sideburns on each side, one on each side here, and we've got a, a hat that's going to come around. So those, as we remove some wood in that area there, for instance, you're going to create a little bit deeper, a wider ear. So we're going to leave that for now. So just round over the edges for on the outside for now. So there's one ear completed, and there's the other. They don't have to be exactly the same because you can only see one ear at a time. So now we got to worry about uh, the sideburns how much of a sideburn we're going to leave. He's got, you know, the old-fashioned uh, ball player had the big burly sideburns if you want to leave it that way or you can go to the more modern guy that uh, doesn't have it. I guess if uh, you did it in today's environment you pretty well have to give him a, a beard too like a, you know a lot of the players are wearing those 
half beards anymore. And then we're going to work on the hat. We got to decide on where that hat is going to sit. And that creates the forehead. So we'll do all that all at once. So I created a forehead by identifying where the cap is going to start at the front, uh, relatively straight across. And then as it turns, I'm going to uh, create the shape come down so that it comes down a little bit. starts to give the indication that the back is the peak at the back because it's a backwards hat is going to be lower. See it comes down on an angle. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to create this shape coming down so that it ends up coming down on the back of his hat. So the peak is at the back. So draw it on and make sure you're comfortable with that. And then we're going to use a V-tool to start to par it down. Once you're satisfied, then uh, I get a little bit aggressive here and get the V-tool out, lay it on its mitt on its side so that you can create, start to create the shape coming across. By removing the wood below, you give bulk to the to the hat itself. So just start to remove the the wood. And I'll do that all the way around. So the top view, you've got the, the round shape on the front. So now you've got to create the peak on this hat. And uh, this is rounded here just as it's rounded on the front eventually. So just kind of visualize that. That would be the extreme point. I'm going to keep mine relatively even. So we're going to just create the peak of the hat sitting back. Uh, maybe a bit more than that. You know, something like that. So it's just a question of chopping off the edges here and creating that nice, nice round shape in there. So now I want to round this, the back of the, the head part of it, leaving the peak here. So I'll start to round that around. So there it is with the, the body of the hat the top part rounded now. So it's rounded on the front and rounded on the back. Now I got to decide on which shape I want to have the back of the hat. Now do I want to have it hanging down? If I want to have it hanging down then I, I create the bottom of the hat and I bring it down and remove this wood below. And don't, don't commit yourself to the peak size until you're satisfied with the outside shape and the bottom shape of your hat. So I'm going to use a V-tool to, to undercut that to create the bottom part of the hat. And once I get that satisfied, then I can see that I'm going to leave about that much space there for the peak. Okay, so do the, do the underside of the hat first. So now you can see how I've created that slope. So I've got it down at the back and it comes up towards the front. I've got a notch in, in here and a notch in here, but I'm going to get rid of that as I shape the, the hat to the head. So if you visualize the, the top of the head, so I'm going to have to take some work, work wood off the forehead, and eventually this is going to be just a continued shape of the, as if the hat, hat is the head. In other words, the hat's going to fit pretty so close to the to the shape of the head. So now I, I'm satisfied with the way the shape of the back of the peak is, so now I can establish, well that's going to be the width of the peak, or the thickness of the peak. So now I can start to remove the, the wood on the top side. Just remember that once you get that removed, this is, becomes a little bit more fragile and uh, just be gentle with it. So when you go to remove the wood, try not to work too much across it, more in towards the meat of the wood, and that way you'll have a better chance of retaining it without breaking it off. So there it is with the peak more or less established. 
on the back of his head. Now, this shape right in here of the the back of the, or the actually the front of the hat if you're looking at it, this area in here sometimes has some sort of a patch on there. In other words, uh, some sort of an emblem or insignia for the ball team. So you want to keep that fairly flat if you're going to do that type of thing in there. You want to try and keep that shape uh, relatively flat and, and even so that you can work on that down the road. So now we've got to work on the front of the hat and I'm going to remove some wood for the uh, from the forehead to create the forehead and the, the brow in, in here. I'll use a knife to do most of that work. So you can see I've removed a, a fair bit of wood across the forehead. Now there's a really a sharp edge here and I've got to get rid of that and more particularly I've got to separate the two brows. So I'm going to end up with a, a brow on both sides, something like that. So in order to do that, I'm going to first of all take the edge off, do a, do a separation, and then I'm going to use my knife to scoop out the, the wood above that to create the brow. I'll do that, I'll do the, uh, the sharp edge and get that set up. Okay, so now you can play around with these eyebrows here. Notice how I've got it separated in the middle here. Um, you can massage the areas in here to get rid of all the sharp edges if you want. Um, use a gouge upside down or finesse with a, a gouge a little bit. Create the shape. Bring it over as far as you want on either side. But pay particular attention that the under, undercut from the back of the brow starts to create that shape of the forehead starting to disappear up towards the and underneath the hat. So now it becomes obvious that the, the hat is a little bit too bulbous in this area here. So you're going to have to reshape that as time goes by. I'll pass this around. So now we got to create the jawline. So you can see that we needed to create the ear before we can create the jawline. The jaw comes off and if you grab a hold of the bottom of your ear and then feel down to where the jaw is on your own face, you'll find that it comes off the bottom of the ear. So this guy here, they showed it coming off the back. I typically have it come off dead center. But it comes more or less straight down and then comes out. So, so just like that. So here's the finished one the one that I had done previously, and you can see that it comes off down the back of the ear or bottom of the ear, can either either way, comes straight down and then comes down to below the chin. So that's the, the line you gotta draw on, and we'll do that right now. So there it is. So there's the, there's the bottom of the ear. Can I do that through there? So there's the bottom of the ear right there comes straight down off the bottom of the ear. Now we got to point it to the bottom of the chin. So put a little mark over where the bottom of the chin is going to be. So now it's going to be a straight line to there. So the wood we remove is the wood below that to create the jaw line. So it's identical on the other side to make sure that the symmetry stays uh, you know where the bottom of the ear is going to be, but you don't know where the chin is going to be, so draw a line straight across the bottom. Uh, can you, yeah, there you can see it. And that will orient it on the far side so that then you can make them match. I'll, I'll put a V tool in there. To, a gouge would work fine. I say the number 11 would work and they're fine. There it is with the, the gouge. Removing the remove the wood, and you can see a definite jawline there. Eventually, we have to remove the wood behind here. You only remove the wood behind here once you decide on what type of hair you want here and what type of collar you want the guy to have. There's the other side. 
Notice that I've hollowed out a little bit under the chin as well. To make the where is it there? So you can make the uh, the chin kind of hang down a little bit. 